Hello everyone, hi. Um, my name is Caroline Richardson and this is my colleague. Hi, I'm Robin, I'm the team librarian at the Public Library of Brooklyn. Awesome, excellent. So we are, um, we're both librarians at the Public Library of Brookline. Um, we both work with our the library's idea space program. And since we can't meet physically in the library's idea space right now, we're working with the Brookline Interactive Group to bring you guys a little bit of idea space at home through craft alongs every Thursday at 4 p.m on Facebook Live and on Channel 3. So however you're tuning into us right now, we are so excited that you're here and we look forward to continuing to see you each Thursday at 4 p.m. Um, at those same venues. This week, we're gonna be making fairy houses. I think Robin has an example of a vase that we're using. Yeah, so um, I'll just show you guys a little bit um, Apologies in advance for the fact that I'm just using my iPad, so you'll get kind of a wobbly view of what I'm doing here. Um, but we have all sorts of supplies. So as you can see, the main thing for fairy houses is to go outside and kind of go through and look for interesting, um, different kinds of pieces of nature and ideas. So I have a forest pretty near where I live, so I was able to get a lot of good kind of stuff. Um, and then the rest of it is built around cardboard and things you might already have at home just from boxes. I'm going to just set up my little platform here so you can kind of see where my little, this is how I'm starting. Um, so I have a couple different boxes that I had already. Uh, first, I did want to say I'm going to build the base for mine. Um, some people can just use, like if you have a big piece of bark, you could just use that. Um, I could not find anything that was like big enough and flat enough that really made sense. So I've got just two pieces of cardboard in a box that, um, that I ripped up and I'm actually going to glue them together quickly so they're a little bit more solid and a little more stable because it's just, you know, flimsy box cardboard. Um, so that's going to be my base. And um, let me see, I have, one thing I am using is hot glue, um, which I know not everyone has. We have a kind of ridiculous number of these at the library, but um, we use them for crafts all the time. And so I decided to just use this. So I'm just going to run a really quick kind of bead of hot glue along the edges. It doesn't have to be perfect at all because no one's going to really see this part. I just want it to stick down well enough. And hot glue, of course, is very hot. I am famous in the library for having burned myself on hot glue many times um, because I get impatient and want to make something stick faster. Um, but here we go. So. This will just stick it down just so we have a more solid base um, than what I had previously. Um, so just to show you where I started from, so I had these little round boxes like this and I thought that could be fun for a little cottage. And you can see actually the lines that I drew here, this was the label that was on the box, so that gave me a very square. Um, and I started to think, okay, well that could be like a doorway, so that's pretty simple. Um, it also has like a, a little bit of an indentation on the top, so I thought that could be helpful to make a roof or to give support for whatever I wanted to do from there. Um, so in that case, it has a top and a bottom. So I was debating about, do I want to just use this part and just have that be the house? Do I want to somehow use the bottom? And I think for now, I'm just going to use the top because um, it makes a nice little kind of base that works with the cardboard that I have. But um, I also wanted to figure out, you know, this is pretty thin. You can see it's not that thick for cardboard, so it's pretty easy for me to just cut with the pair of scissors that I have. Um, so I'm going to just cut open the door here. And these are just regular scissors. There's nothing fancy about them. Um, and I'm going to leave one side of this stuck uh, or uncut so that I can just fold it and make the door open without having to use tape. Um, the other one I tried this on, I actually didn't do that. I just cut it completely out and I was like, oh wait, I should have just left it. Um, what I might do here just a little bit is use the scissors to kind of score the edge so that it knows to bend on a straight line. And there we go. So now we've got a little internal door. 
that I can use um, to make a little door for this. Um, and then from there, there's a lot of different things you can use. Um, I had a lot of these little um, popsicle sticks, they're like mini popsicle sticks that I just had left over. Um, so I was thinking of using these almost like X's along the edge. This cardboard is a nice kind of uh, rough but very even cardboard, so I can think of that as like stucco on the house or something like that. So I thought I might use that. Um, I'm just going to stick a few of these on here. Now I'm going to use the hot glue um, because that was just the easiest of what I had. If you're going to use something that's more liquid, like I have this, um, this is the, a regular kind of clear glue. This works very nicely, but it does take longer to dry. So you may have to give yourself a little bit of time if you're going to build up layers. Paper will dry much faster, but something like wood may take a little longer to stick. So, Carolyn, what were you using for your base? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, for sure. Um, set up. Um, I'm going to hold it up to see if um, maybe you want to make um, a narrow box so like my uh, lid and just fold it up with her um, about maybe two five. And I'm using that as a base to um, stand up um, the frame of my little box. So what I'm doing is I have a hot glue gun, but I'm going to see it just for curiosity if I can avoid using for this project. So here is the base that I've created. It's about two inches high, and I've been my frame that I've begun to build here at the And I'm just um, doing it in a style, so I'm putting each twig on top of the other to build up the sides. To build the ball. Yeah, exactly, to build up the walls of the house like this. Um, and so my plan is to build that up to a certain height. And then uh, here is my box of found found um, items. I have lots of kits. I also was going to find some great pieces of art, which I'm thinking mm -hmm. of like cool boots for the, um, for the house once I get to that stage. I also have some pine cones. Um, and I found some amazing pieces of, of moss, which I'm really excited about. So I, oh, great. Yeah, exactly. And then I have some, some uh, acorn caps because fairies, just acorn caps, kind mm -hmm. of very nice. Why not? <laughs> and um, nice. some flowers that I gathered in my nature walk, but unfortunately they don't seem to have withstood the heat so well. Yeah, that's the problem. I know. Um, I no, go ahead. Oh, yeah. um, I was. Yeah. So I was. I was. Um, I think I. My fairy housemate actually knew more about building up a garden around outside the house. Then uh, mm -hmm. uh, it'll be pretty basic. But what were you saying, Robin? Oh, I was just gonna say. Um, I'll show you guys a little bit more of the uh, gluing on of the popsicle sticks that I got here, just so you can see what I did. Um, but then I actually have a second version of this that I completed um, the other day, just to get the popsicle stick part done. Um, like Carolyn, I think the fun part is going to be decorating a lot of things. So once you have the base, you can do some interesting stuff. Um, but if you want to see how the popsicle sticks work, they're pretty simple. You know, they're little sticks. You can actually cut these with scissors, um, but they are pretty hard to cut. So I don't recommend it unless you have a real need. <laughs> um, I, I did it, but I was not super like excited about the results. So um, I just have my hot glue here, which is just you know pretty hot. Um, and then I will, I'm just sticking them so they don't go all the way past the bottom because I don't want to not be able to put my house on the piece of cardboard. Um, now of course since I chose a round piece, this makes it a little harder because you can't just stick things flat on, that's not going to work quite as easily. Um, so a lot of the design can go this way, uh, where it's all vertical. And I think that'll, that'll actually be kind of interesting looking. So I have used a bunch of these just to see what kind of patterns you can make up on the, uh, the top. And then on the other side, of course, maybe you can do something interesting up here with a little tower sort of crenellation or um, ideas for that. Um, so this is what I did um, is just this kind of continuing all the way around 
I had to count to make sure I had enough of the little sticks to work. Um, but let me show you the one that I actually finished that part of it on so you guys can see what that turned out like. So this one is the one that's been completely covered as you can see all the way around. Um, and then I, I uh, built up a little doorway here. So it's got the same kind of cut that it had in that first box. And then I just put four little pieces on to make the front door and this little half piece to make the latch. And then I stuck on these little tiers to make a little bit of a roof because that seemed like a fun idea. Um, so one of the things I was gonna try to figure out for today was to kind of figure out what I could add to this um, because of course the point is to have it look like it's part of nature and also to use all the elements that I also found, including, you know, like Carolina, I found some great acorn caps like this. Um, some really fun sticks. I like my little tree branches here. Um, and I have stones and different kinds of uh, twigs and also some really nice sort of almost like driftwood style wood. Um, so that's kind of what I was thinking about. One of the things I was going to show you all that um, I was going to use is I, pardon me, have this, um, this brown sort of wax um, that you can add to wood and then rub it off. So it makes it look a little bit like a stain. Um, so I thought I'd put a little bit on that just to make this uh, house look a little less clean um, because it shouldn't look clean if it's a, if part of nature. So you can see I'll just gonna put a little bit on there. And I'm just using a big breath. It doesn't have to look pretty. I just wanted to get a little bit of almost like dirt on there because it shouldn't look very pristine, at least not to me. Um, but you can see it's a little bit translucent. That looks great. I bet if you, is that the thing that you also theoretically use it as a glue or is it the... No, this one doesn't work as a glue. It's just, just the wax. But you see, if I wipe it off, you get the nice green nice. of the wood. So you can see a little bit. Maybe y'all can see that. Awesome. And how did you first come up with it? Because I know you do a lot of crafting and sort of miniature miniature work. How did you how did you find it? I believe I first found this when I was making Harry Potter ones um, for the library for our various Harry Potter events. I was looking for something that would be fast but would really work nicely with wood um, uh, and would kind of dry in a way that looked interesting. So that is how I found it the first time. I'm known to haunt various craft stores and kind of see what they're doing, what they have, any new kind of materials that I hadn't come across before. So that's the fun part. Um, I found a lot of interesting things like I have, like uh, there's a gold that you can rub on to anything and then like buff it off and it looks really pretty done that before for some of the ones too but I've also done um, all different kinds of paints and glues so I'm just going to keep smooshing this on so that we have a nice little coating um, I might just give a little reminder um, for anyone who may, who may have joined us recently and uh, missed the very beginning of our video. Um, this is this is Carolyn, and Kevin is also uh, a group of health librarian in the public library of Brooklyn. Um, we're working. Uh, we work with Idea Space. Since idea, since we can't be physically in the library space to do Idea Space projects right now, we're um, working on a little bit of Idea Space. So this week, um, probably this from the out of uh, um, sound and also basically staffing home. And so that includes as you are um, going on walks inside, if you see any bathroom, or if you 
moss. I have a great piece of moss right here that I'm definitely going to be integrating into my fairy house. Um, you can use really any natural objects to create something really cool and really special. So uh, that's what we're doing right now. And we hope that if this is your first time joining us, that we will see you tune back in um, next Thursday and um, the following Thursdays on those on those same things. So super exciting to have everybody here. And that's looking really great, Robin. I love I love the effect of the rubbed off. It really gives it that something. Thanks. So as you can see, that only took me a couple of minutes, and I'm just gonna finish wiping off the rest here. Um, I don't actually want this to be wet, and I want to get it to be pretty, pretty dry, pretty quickly. Now, I don't mind getting messy. I'm very used to getting messy when I create anything, and I'm famous for rubbing paint on my face all the time. But um, I think anyone who does any sort of drying or paint can't help but get it on. Um, so that's the basic kind of color that I was going for. I just wanted to make it a little bit less pretty. So I see that there's a little bit of doodads inside here. I want it to look consistent so that it's a little bit darker. I've made the little house. So let me just quickly do that. There we go. So, as Carolyn was saying, the fun part of this, I think, is, is more the kind of decorating the nature part. Um, that's the easiest part, I think, for everyone to do. And I have um, all sorts of things that I kind of picked up and I was trying to figure out, I was trying to decide what I want to do. Um, one thing I had was, I did want to figure out a way to do a little roof here. Um, and so one thing I did that everybody has, or at least hopefully everybody has now, is I made a toilet paper roll. Um, so I decided to try to make a little structure that I could make a roof from. Um, so this is my, my toilet paper roll and I just cut it into little strips so that it kind of turned out almost like a little octopus. And I was gonna stick it kind of on top of my house just to give it a little bit of structure. Um, let me move this back a little bit so you guys can see it better. So if I move this over, you can see a little bit. Oh, maybe you can. Um, but basically, that's the kind of idea. Let me tilt the camera a little bit more. There you go. So you can see. I love that. <laughs> um, and what's nice about this is I figured I would just kind of attach this onto the top of the house and then it'll give a structure. So that what I'm hoping to do is I have these great pine needles and I thought if I can kind of drape them on top of it then we'll have basically a pine needle roof. Um, I don't know if I have enough, we'll see. <laughs> so, um, but that was my basic plan. The only thing right now is I have to figure out how to attach it so it's not completely wobbling off like this. So I have a thought. Let me see. What I could do I still have some of these little popsicle sticks, so I wonder if I can just kind of attach it through the back and put it through the front. Let's see if that would look all right. Yeah, that's possible. Um, let me see if there's anything else I've got. Well, one of the things I have that you know makes a lot of sense is that we all got a bunch of twigs. Um, so I've got some pretty sturdy ones in here. So what I might do is just cut some holes through the top and then it'll just keep it all in the right place. So I think that is what I'll do just to get it a little more stuck. Um, so let me see, I've, looked, I've just got a pair of little scissors here so I can poke a hole. Um, they're a little bit more oof, sharp. <laughs> And it's not pretty, it's just a hole, but that'll work. So if I can put this through, and you can see now I've got a nice little support structure here, and that will keep my roof on so that it doesn't wobble around too much. That's it. So yeah, I think that'll be fun. All right, let me just do that. I'm gonna 
use my hot glue again because that's usually the quickest and the most secure. May not last forever, but it's not really supposed to, um, given that we're putting these in nature. Is, is yours going to be going back to nature when you're done with it? I think so. I don't, except for now. Like, why not put it in my garden? <laughs> and one thing I should show you, this is not, you know, center on the house, but I kind of like it that way. I want it to be a little bit wonky um, and not quite perfect. Because um, I think nature can be pretty consistent, as we've got with, like, the pine cones. They certainly look very ordered. Um, but there's a thought. I was wondering about possibly sticking a pine cone in the top to make the roof. I have a really long pine cone here. Let's see. Yeah, there we go. So um, you can't quite see it, but there's a nice, a nice little pine cone roof, which I think will look fun. Um, all right. So now I'm going to try to figure out where we want to position this on my cardboard so I have some idea of where it's going to live. Um, maybe off of the center there. I think that's a good place to put it. Um, I'm going to do kind of what I just did with the, the um, roof and just poke some holes so I know where I'm going to put this. And I thought I might make some little twiggy sort of fence that will hold it in. So if I move this for a second, I've now made some little holes in the cardboard base here. So I'm just going to dig in a little bit. So we have a little bit of a place to put in some of the narrower twigs that I have, if you can quite see. Caroline, do you mind checking in the chat just to see if there's anything I should be responding to? Let me see. Oh, hello, Beverly. I think we, we have some big enthusiasm from Beverly about regarding the front detail on your house. Oh, thank you. Yeah, yeah. It does, it gives it a lot of character. That's really fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. All right. I'm good. So these are my little skinny twigs that I thought I could put up inside here just to keep it a little bit more wild because I, I mean the one thing is the popsicle sticks look fun but it's not particularly using as many of the sticks as I might have wanted to but I like having the kind of twiggy nature of these things um, everywhere and in, in the outside of this design oh all right trying to move around a little bit like you can. There we go. And here's one more little clay base. All right, let me see. I don't have quite as many skinny clays as I want, but this one should work. There we go. So we're getting a little character here behind how this works. <laughs> now, one of the other things I brought in that I have um, that depends on, on your house if you do something I do is cross stitch and other embroidery. So I just had some embroidery left. So I have some green and some bright colors. So I thought maybe um, later I might make a little tiny paper garland to put outside the house or possibly with some flowers. Um, so that's kind of my thought for some of the uses of kind of having some height on here. Mm. But I think next I'm going to try to add, I think I have enough acorn caps that I could make a little tap. Oh, nice. Oh, nice. Actually, let me, I'm going to show off a little bit what I've been doing. Let yeah, go for it. So what I have, um, let's see, is it switching over? Yes. Um, so here's where I am. Oops right here. Ah, so there's, there's mine. I hope everyone can see it. As, as promised, I was more excited about the landscaping than I was about the house, but there's the house at the end right there. And I've got my little repurposed pine cone trees and some moss. Um, I think my big 
puzzle now is figuring out how to do a door. Um, I think that that would be a pretty great, a pretty great trick to do, but we'll have to, we'll have to see. Um, yeah. Oh, sorry, I'm just trying to get back in here. Um, yeah, I think that um, one of the things that I didn't do is I didn't think about adding windows to my house, and I should have. Um, <laughs> but uh, but one of the things I know that is a good way to do that is to um, use Ziploc bags as the glass inside, and then you get like a nice little setup. Um, so this is just little stones that I found in my yard and I'm just sticking them around the house to give them a little bit of both attitude and sort of stability. Some mm -hmm. of this I'm sure is just like concrete from the road, but oh well, at least I'm putting it to use for something a little different. Um, and then I've got a few more stones and this will also of course stabilize, hopefully, the house a little bit so that if something decides to come in and try to knock it over. It'll have a little bit of support. I kind of I would love to add her to your house, Robin, and turn it into a Baba Yaga. <laughs> that would add some chicken feet. <laughs> so, I could do that with twigs. I wonder if I can figure that out. That I, might, I might have the right kind of twigs. <laughs> uh -huh. And now I'm trying to decide, I'm still trying to decide what I want to do with the roof here. If I want to try for the pine needles, maybe I will. I've also got, I don't have as much moss. That was the one thing I had some trouble finding. Um, but I do have some kind of different, different bits of wood too. So, okay. I'm gonna stick a few more stones back here. So it's got a little bit of kind of back Beauty. One of the things I think that's important when you do anything 3D is to remember to look at it from all sides. Um, sometimes I forget and I get very obsessed with what the front looks like. <laughs> and then I realize, oh, wait a minute, like people aren't always going to see that first. So I need to pay attention and make sure that I'm doing some interesting things with the back. So here's the last, last few stones. There we go. All right, so I'm going to try to start working on the roof a little bit. Uh, I'm going to see if I can tilt this a little bit so you guys can see better what I'm doing with the roof. There we go. I think that looks a little easier. You can see more. Um, so yeah, I've got, I grew up in a house where we had no lawn. We only had pine needles. And to this day, I prefer them to grass. <laughs> so I am always looking for pine needles uh, when I want to sit down. All right, what do we think? Do we think? I think, I think pine needles, yeah? Yes. <laughs> we'll see if I can get them to stay. That's the question. I'm gonna try just gluing just the top bit so we can keep the uh, the nice flare of the actual needle. It's always more fun. Some of these are a little longer than others. So I've got these funny little, you know, that's basically the end of the branch. But that I think will look cool. All right. The one thing I kind of wished I could find that I didn't have any uh, around were some sort of berry or dried flowers of some sort. Oh uh, yeah. But but I didn't, I don't have any right now among my craft stuff at home. Um, and I didn't have as much uh, um, um, around my house exactly. The one thing you may notice that I'm trying to do is, is match. You see they're kind of naturally curved the way they've dried out. 
So I'm trying to match them a little bit to the slope of the roof. So we've got kind of that it's going with the flow in terms of the shape that I've got made by just the uh, toilet paper roll, which is handy. Awesome. Our, just to let you know, Robin, our friend Vishnu says that um, your house is very cool, which I definitely agree with. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Thank you, Thank you Vishnu. All right, let's see. I may not have a ton of pine needles nest, so I'm going to try to use them wisely here. Let's see. I think I'll put some here. Let's see if that'll fit in nicely. It doesn't have to be perfect. I'm a perfectionist when it comes to making crafts, but I think for this kind of house, it does not matter nearly as much. I'm not trying to make a replica of anything or make it look any particular way. That's kind of freeing when you're making crafts like this, mm -hmm. is to just have fun with it and go where your inspiration takes you. <laughs> now I will say if you guys, if you don't have hot glue, which is again a very specific sort of glue that you have to feel comfortable using, um, one of the other things I considered here for the roof, for example, is that you can just use a, a string to tie everything around and then add some glue to it and let it dry. You can either take the string off or you can leave it on if you like the way that it looks. But it's a good way to kind of add the same sort of character um, without having to have glue that dries as fast. Some folks might also have, um, you know, the jewelry wire might be something that would... Yes. Mm -hmm. Or floral wire, actually, um, if you make flower arrangements. That's a nice dark green color, so that would look nice. Yeah. All right, so I think I am not going to have enough fine needles to go all the way around, so I'm going to concentrate on the front, despite I think it'll still look fine. Um, let me just try. I have some really nice just moss, or no, not even moss, it's just dried, dried flowers of some sort. I'm not even, I'm so terribly not informed about what the natural world would call these things. But, um, but then I'll be able to, I think, move on to putting some stuff around the house. And I think kind of as Caroline is saying, I really enjoy the decorative side of a project like this as well, where you get to like make a whole little world. So it's not perfect, but it's looking pretty fun. So I'm just going to fill in a little bit on the back so it looks like consistently that there are some pine, um, pine needles in here. Mm -hmm. I thought about doing the full kind of, you know, box of dirt, basically, <laughs> that you were doing as well. Mm -hmm. um, and then I just couldn't justify figuring out how to get that into my house well enough. Yeah. Um, to, to film what I was trying to do. So I figured I'd keep it small. <laughs> I, I definitely had a moment of chagrin once I realized, you know, what I had brought into my apartment. <laughs> <laughs> I did go through and try to kill any tiny little bugs, which maybe it makes me mean, but I didn't need bugs in my house. But it would make it very realistic, so. <laughs> has to live in this house. Carolyn, did you grow up with, with like fairy fairy stories of the little fairies in the woods types of things? Yeah, absolutely. We had all of the Arthur Rackham illustration. Um, oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. Um, what we actually used to do and what I've been thinking of, um, we used to have a lot of wild around my house um, because we had a, uh, kind of like a very shabby little wood from behind, behind where I grew up and you could do that after they had fallen and um, the sea pods had dried, you could put those eggs and put them on them and they would call them fairy friends because that's what they look like. And I wish, I wish we were in that season right now. We aren't, but I feel like that would go very well with um, maybe a follow-up project sometime. So, yeah. Yeah. Let's see. 
I've got some white gravel in there. All right. I'm considering now what I'm going to do with the, the bottom here and also how to fill in. I think for the top, I'm just going to use this. This is just a little bit of greenery, kind of dried out mossy stuff. And I'm not going to worry about gluing it down. I'm just going to drape it around the top because it's got this nice like feel to it here. Mm. And I'm pretty sure it's just going to stay there. And indeed, that is exactly what it's doing. <laughs> so, um, oh, to plan. And I don't think most of these things are not, I don't think, supposed to last forever. They're supposed to be kind of fun and interesting. So now I get to work a little more on the landscaping part. So let me move this little back so you can see. Now I have a bunch of these nice, there's one really big one here, it's a nice big hunk of wood. So I think I'm gonna stick that over to the side a little bit. What do we think? Or do we think maybe to the back? I like the back. Yeah. <laughs> um, I do wish I had moss. You know what I'm gonna do before I actually put this down? I have one other little bit of paint. Um, which is, I have these little, um, these are uh, acrylic paints, but they're translucent. So they're very thin, but they're also just kind of um, uh, clearer than your normal kind of standard acrylic paint. Um, and I'm gonna put a little bit of green on this cardboard. So if I can, oh, oh you know what? I don't think I ever opened this one. Um, nope. Got to take off the little cap. But you can see this is a really, really bright green. It's dark, but it is bright. So I'm going to actually add a little bit of brown so it's not so, so green. And then I'm just going to muck it around on the bottom here. I have a bunch of different translucent paints I've used. Um, you can see it even on my hand. That's kind of how how translucent it is. And if any of you came to Harry Potter last year, you you might have seen the um, Harry Potter, the Nimbus rooms that I made. And that is actually where I got a lot of this translucent paint was because I was trying to mimic the way that wood looks on, um, onto some piping, some PVC piping. So I needed something that would look a little more translucent than your ordinary paint. And this works beautifully. And this is another thing where, you know, again, no one is expecting this to look pristine um, when you're painting something like this because it's supposed to be mimicking outside and will eventually go outside. So I think just a little bit of paint will make this a little easier to decorate. I do kind of wish I had the dirt now that <laughs> now that you have the dirt, Carolyn. But um, or some moss. Um, I was unable to find some, some decent moss that wouldn't have involved me like ripping it up, <laughs> right, which right. seems mean. I, I I did it really try to make sure that everything that, that I had was found rather than stuff from the um, someone just in the name of community, I thought that would probably be the best thing to do. Um, I have oh, also the sort of flamboyance, like theoretically you would want your house to be able to finish in with the background. And so that's sort of another reason that, you know, it, it's good if it does look a little less designed or architectural, like, because you would want it to be um, kind of subtle. Kind of subtle in the natural landscape. So, mm -hmm. yeah. I, I have had a fairy house disaster in that I touched it accidentally with an elbow and it collapsed into it. So, do some rebuilding. Do some rebuilding. That's probably an argument in favor of using. <laughs> So you can see now that I've mixed it so that the green and the brown are kind of together. So it's a very dark brownie green, mm -hmm. which is kind of what I was going for. Yeah, it does look really good, Robin. Yeah. 
And I thought I'm going to add a little bit to the house itself just to tie it in. So it looks a little bit like maybe there's a little bit of moss that's been growing on the house over time. A little bit on the rock. It makes it less neat, which I think is important. And these are just kind of stiff uh, bristle brushes, so they're pretty simple and they make a nice pattern on their own. So that can be nice when you're building something like this that you want it to have it look kind of an interesting brushstroke, as they say. There we go. I'm just gonna open the door a little bit. All right. So now that I've done that, we've got more of a base here that looks a little bit less like cardboard, which is really the point. Um, all right, so we had this nice big hunk of wood, so that can kind of go towards the back here, which I like. And I'm gonna stick that down a little bit. And this might take a little more hot glue than normal because it's a big piece of wood and it's not an even surface, so it needs a lot of stuff to stick to. But this is pretty substantial. There we go. And then I have a bunch of little different kinds of pieces here, so I'm trying to decide how I want to use these. Question is, do we want something that looks like stools or like a little table? That might be nice. Let me see, I've got some, I've got these nice lighter pieces of wood. So I think I might set this up as if it's like a little garden table. With some little pieces. <laughs> and you can pretend we're having fairy tea, as they say. Um, do you happen to have any acorn cups, cups with you? I do. So that's what I was thinking. I can use those. I've got a little seat here. And one more little seat. There we go. All right, maybe I can, what I can do, since that one looks a little bit like the base of a table, I've got another one on top, so I can stick that kind of on top. So it looks like our picnic table. I think that looks pretty good. Ooh, ooh, that's actually kind of more interesting on that side. Let's see. Maybe I'll do that. I like the way that looks. That's more pretty. Um, there we go. Now, one of the things when I was thinking about this is that I wanted my house to look like it's you know, kind of from the natural world, but I also wanted a few little flashes of color. Um, so that's why I was thinking about, as we said, doing a little garland, doing something a little different when it comes to the color that's in here. Now, these are the, the only two things that I found that have like little mossy sticks. So I'm gonna put a few of those around because I like the idea of there being a little bit of moss somewhere in here. Um, what do we think? Yeah. Maybe over here. Yeah. And I think all the different variations you can find with wood and sticks like this are always really interesting. The other question is I do have some wire and I was debating about using it, but I might not because I think it'll be a little too flashy. Um, I also think you don't need it. It's, it's obviously so well constructed. It seems really stable. So mm -hmm. I feel like you wouldn't need it. So here are my little acorn cats. I have a few of them here. So I'm gonna see if I can find some, like a little flat one here that can be a little dish. 
See, that one looks like it's flat enough that it'll stay. There we go. And then I also, uh, we found these, which are little pods of some sort. I am not sure what they are. Um, but I thought that might work as almost like a little bird bath or something into the yard here. So I'm gonna put that in here. There we go. And then the question is, do I wanna to try to do something? I have so many acorn caps, I'm trying to decide if they need something interesting. I wonder if I could put, No. Hmm. Maybe up top. Yeah, I like that up there. Let me see if I can put a little bit of spot of glue. That'll hold that down. Oh. oh. Ah. I think that's a we just got a question uh, of uh, what a fairy is. Mm -hmm. um, I think it all depends on which tradition you're coming from. But um, I certainly grew up with the idea of two different kinds of what we think of as the, the little fairies that live in the woods, like pixies, mm -hmm. and um, what we might know best from pop culture is like Tinkerbell. Um, because Tinkerbell is like a little fairy with wings. He's very, very tiny. Um, so that kind of idea was certainly very early in my head, but then I also grew to know more about what is more the kind of Irish tradition of fairies who are human-sized and basically just have their own culture and their own court that are either in the woods or underground, depending on which traditions you go into and which time you're talking about. Um, and usually they're a little either a little bit like tricksters or a lot like tricksters. Um, they're usually not someone you want to make a bargain with mm. um, or necessarily do deals with. Um, what did you grow up with, Caroline? I, yeah, uh, like Rob and I really grew up with sort of the tradition of, you know, the sort of Tinkerbell style fairy um, or the idea of a brownie, which kind of at least as I always thought of it was like a tiny little person, but not necessarily with the Tinkerbell ladies, um, who would kind of just go around um, having fun in a very kind of like English child, uh, like little English Victorian fairy tales of those kinds. And then um, as I grew up and kind of read more than learning more about the slightly darker or um, more trickster aspects behind um, behind the idea of fairies and like supernatural char uh, trickster characters. Um, the thing that I really thought was fascinating about um, sort of the Irish stories is the idea of names being very powerful and how you should never give your name to somebody if you don't know exactly who that person is and you're sure it's not a fairy in disguise. Um, I thought it was very, very interesting. Um, so there were tricks that you could do. So instead of if somebody asks um, what your name is, instead of telling them what your name is, you could say, oh, you can call me Caroline, for example, or like my nickname or people call me Caroline, but not actually saying my name is Caroline because then that might be, um, that might get you into a spot of trouble if you were to ever do that. So, so yeah, yeah, they're really, they're really fun. I love reading about um, sort of mythology and supernatural creatures that are not necessarily from a culture of your own. It's really interesting to see, uh, what those myths and stories tell you about those cultures and those people who tell those stories. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, I always like the, um, the warning of that you should never eat anything. Um, if you eat anything from fairies, then you will never be able to leave and you'll be trapped with them forever. Um, yeah. A lot of them come from music too, from the ballads 
that are very famous. There's a ballad called Tamlin, uh, which I'm sure you know, Caroline, um, which is uh, now the um, basis of many, many beautiful sort of picture books all the way up through novels um, for adults. And I have always loved Tamlin is a good, a good one if you want to learn about the kind of um, fairy court idea that the fairy queen is someone that you can run across and probably shouldn't. Um, but, um, yeah. And that one has a great um, heroine too. Yes. Janet? Yeah. 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 Yes. Um, so I'm just adding a few more acorns over here to my little, I've got some actual acorns with some little more caps. Um, and then I'm going to try to make a little paper garland for my little house here. And uh, let's see. So what I found is I have these two little sticks that have little forks in how they're set up. So I was going to set them up kind of across away from each other here and then string a little garland between them so that we had a fun little sort of um uh, something something bright basically amongst what i was doing so let me just i'm going to poke a few more holes in my cardboard um and then we'll have a nice little finale here for the or just say they're having a party at this house today <laughs> So, um, now I, I want to make fairy cakes. That's what I'm going to do. Oh, uh, yeah, fairy cake. Has anyone, I wonder if anyone in our audience has had fairy cake. Um, those are lots of fun. They're basically just bread and butter and sprinkles. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and they're really, or what we call sprinkles or jimmies, depending on which part of the country you're from. Um, but uh, I always really enjoyed fairy bread and fairy cakes. Okay, that's pretty sturdy. And then I've got one more hole up here. I'll put this in here. Now, the other reason I added the two layers of cardboard is so that we'd have a little bit more of a base to stick this stuff into. Um, so that it could stand up on its own relatively well. And these are a little wobbly, but that should work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. So what I did have is I have a little pile of scrap paper. Um, I My house is full of scrap paper because I do a lot of scrap and building with them. Little tiny objects. I do a lot of miniatures and kind of looking for interesting things. So... What I thought I'd do here that would be pretty simple, I've got these nice little strips of paper. Um, is just cut a few of them into like a diamond shape. So you can see. Doesn't have to be perfect at all. And then what I'll be able to do is fold them over and then hang them on a little piece of string like a garland mm. and we'll have a few different colors so that it looks pretty and then my final touch from my garden speaking here is i got these little tiny i don't know if you can see them they're little tiny flower buds that have dried out so i'm going to try to add those to the garland we'll see how successful i am but yeah, I think this particular craft obviously is assuming we're talking about the fairies that are tiny. <laughs> so yeah. that's where they would live. I was, and um, of course, there's a. I know Carolyn, you and I both share a love of Sherlock Holmes, and yes. Arthur Conan Doyle was a great believer of fairies. Um, yes. He loves fairies. Yeah, tell us about the fairies if you want to. The girls who took the photos. Mm -hmm. um, oh, sorry. Um, <laughs> no, no. Go ahead if you want to tell it. <laughs> oh, yeah. So it's um, sort of one of the great 
well, great, quote unquote, um, hoaxes is there were, um, I think, two or three sisters, and they were the Cottingwood family. And um, the general gist, because I don't remember enough to be 100% that I'm being accurate in terms of how events unfolded, but they were playing around in the early days of photography and they cut out paper dolls um, of fairies and took photos of themselves. And as I understand it, later on, their parents or some adult friend found the photos and had them published in a paper. And it sparked this huge debate as to whether the girls had caught photos of real fairies on film. And Arthur Conan Doyle was felt very strongly that um, these sisters had caught photos of real fairies. And um, it was, it's a really interesting story. I know there's been great um, books for um, children um, and tweens that have been written about this event. Um, but it's fascinating because it wasn't an intentional hoax, but it did, it was one of those stories that found a lot of traction in the media and um, people took for granted what they were being told rather than actually using the scientific method to investigate if it was true. Um, so it's a really fantastic story and has been getting, has been sort of revived recently um, with, you know, the internet and kind of internet hoaxes get, get, get circulated. Um, it's a great story though. Yeah. yeah. All right. So this is my final little decoration here. Is I've got I'm just measuring some some garland embroidery floss here to make sure I don't go too far with my little garland so that I can tie it on. So I'm just tying knots so that I have a sense of how you know how long my piece of string should be. And then I'm just gonna add my little bits of paper and my flowers. Now one thing I've learned over the years of making little tiny things like this with garlands is that you do need to actually glue the little piece of paper to the string or else it'll move too much and they'll all just slump to the middle and that will look strange. <laughs> so, um, cause I kept thinking, oh, but like a real garland, you could just hang it up there. Mm -hmm. And so you can see there's a little triangle of color there. Mm -hmm. um, with a real garland, you could just hang it up and it wouldn't quite do that, but it gets very difficult to, uh, make it all perfect. So here's a nice purple. That should stay. So yeah, there we go. Oh, my hand's in the way. You can see. And I'm trying um, to peel. I'll do this quickly as I can. All right, one, two more. I kind of like the idea of whoever is in this house having having a party, mm -hmm. feeling in the mood for a party. Um, all right, one more. Okay. Right. Right All right. So there's the basic idea. There you go. What a fantastic job. All right, let me tie this on quickly. And then you'll show you. And then I, yeah, I was like, I, I'm curious to see what you've been working on all this time. <laughs> I've been concentrating on my own. <laughs> so. Oh, well, I'm so happy that you shared it with us because it's really so cool to see something like that being made in real time. <laughs> I did cheat a little bit with the popsicle sticks, but otherwise. <laughs> what I like about this is you can use anything. You can use a little box. You can use all sorts of things. All right. So I think, oh, you've got nice flowers. Oh, <laughs> All right. 
So I think with mine, I'm gonna, I was gonna put the flowers in the garland, but I think I'm actually gonna use them to fill my little pod here. Maybe that's what these fairies eat. Little tiny white flowers. That sounds like I think a that, that sounds like a fairy diet. <laughs> All right. Yay. You want to show off yours and then I'll show off mine? Here is, here is mine. Right here. Oh, all the flowers. They look beautiful. Thank you. I'm especially. Lovely. Oh, oh, no, be full. I found this great little nut that I really want to put right on my roof like that. Oh, yeah. Here. You know, it looks like an owl. Yeah. <laughs> That's fabulous. <laughs> Oh, fantastic. Well, thank you everyone for joining us. Um, again, we are two librarians from the Brookline Public Library. We do a lot of work with the library's idea space, and we are doing, we're meeting to do special idea space programs um, at four o'clock every Thursday um, here on Facebook Live and on Channel 3. Big thanks to the Brookline Interactive Group for helping us out with our broadcasts, and we hope that you will tune in again next week for another fantastic class. So thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Bye.